All right, Meg, we are back with one of our favorite guests. You might be one of our most, like, this might, how many times this have is we had your, Emma on? This will be your third time chatting with us, I believe. Or f- it third. might be fourth because we did something at Worlds. Yes. Like, you're just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want me to be or not. Uh, we want you to be. <laughs> okay. Like, we've become huge fans. Everything you've done has been spectacular. We've kind of watched you go, like, if this was one of those uh, stock charts... This is one of those ones that's going up. That emoji. Yeah. That's my favorite emoji. That You should own that emoji. <laughs> I will now. Well, I own the goat's emoji now, so. Oh, <laughs> so right. I'll take that one too. That one costs a little bit more. That was like one of those, what do they call them? The NFTs, which kind of went out of yeah, style. But not just the goat, the two goat emoji. That's, oh, two that's goats. different. Wait, there's an emoji with two goats? No, but I just oh. do the two goats emoji. <laughs> Double goats? Yeah. I like it. Do you know why? No. Because you have goats. Because I have goats. <laughs> Do you know I don't refer to myself about as this? the goat. Oh. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> that laughing you hear off camera is confusing. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so I had a goat. His name was Flash. He gave me a scar on my lip. You can't even see it. Was he so fast with a name like that? He was chained to a tree, so he wasn't that fast. <laughs> what? I know, sad story. What? We, we don't oh want to get God. into that. Way to kill the moon, man. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I've been doing that all day. Thomas, this is boring. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so we're going to get into it. We're doing things a little bit different. We had talked last time we were out in Boulder mm-hmm. that it might be fun after a marathon to have a cocktail or two, or two. and then recap the day. <laughs> now, at that time, I was thinking that you were breaking the American record. This was going to be celebratory and exciting. It still can be celebratory. I mean, both of you ran today. and We did run. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and, I mean... It's always weird when a great run isn't exactly what you want it to be. And I think that's where we are today. Both of you ran an amazing race. And it was so much fun chasing you around the course. But why don't you tell me a little about today? Yeah, today I had a lot of confidence. Uh, Maybe not as much confidence as I had going into Boston. That was just like, that cycle was just so perfect. I've had um, a few like planner issues, um, like planner fascist stuff going on, but it wasn't. Planner's peanuts. Sorry. Planner's peanuts. Uh, yeah, I yes. Heard, I heard I what heard, you did the yeah. first time. Yep, <laughs> sure did. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing with the mood I'm here? I'm double goating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some planner issues. Yes, um, and so I was like a little concerned about it, but nothing like that really. It was just in the back of my mind, you know, could potentially arise during the race, but I was just wanting to go after it. I know that I am in 218, 219 shape, so I went out at... 219 pace and hoped I could be able to notch it down. I had Matt Yano as a pacer. I had um, Emily Sisson right there alongside um, me and we were trying to work together. And then um, once I got to, I think it was mile 15 at the fluid station, I stepped into a pothole and things went south. Um, My foot started hurting really bad and ended up having to hobble in 10 miles. So not the best way to end the last 10 miles. But did your coach know that you had a planner issue before you went into the race? Ish. <laughs> so you were you hiding it? Yes, but like for my own sake, I just didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want to speak it into more existence. Um, I get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, I think we, as athletes, we all kind of do that. Like if it was a big issue, I would have told him absolutely. If it was something that was going to affect my training going into the Olympic trials, hundred percent would have told him. I think all of us, even amateur athletes do that when there's a injury or something's not quite right. There's times where you're like, I need to back off and take my training down. Mm -hmm. And there's times where you're like, I think I can run through this. Mm -hmm. Obviously this was a, I think I can run through this. It definitely was. Um, but then I got to mile 17 and had to stop because it hurt so bad. And I was like, maybe if I stretch it out, um, that'll, do the trick but it didn't do the trick oh weird so we were at mile 17 were you yeah and you ran by so i didn't see it stopping so i mean i'm guessing it wasn't like exactly because yeah GPS it was like kind of all blur so yeah. Yeah. but that's so crazy because you looked pretty strong the whole time at least from where we were coming in so when we went to the finish we were looking for you and we're like checking the clock mm-hmm. okay and then you kind of start to realize what's happening with people and you start seeing people come in so at 17, did you kind of say this isn't going to be the day or did you know earlier? 
I knew basically at 16 it hurt really bad and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to just run it out like run out the pain I knew it was going to be a full-on grind for that next 10 miles um so it was just going to be you know try to make it um with withstanding the pain did you did you think if you had known like maybe today was going to be that kind of race would like would you back off and maybe not run on an injured uh, plantar fasciitis. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Like, no, if I knew I was going to be in that much pain today, again with the trials right around the corner, I I probably want to race today. Yeah. Okay, but you went through the half in one oh nine and change. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's is a, that fast, Megan? <laughs> that's a yeah. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, I it's think I've run. That's fast for me. That's that's yeah. a PR in the I think half. I've run for a five k like that. That's a PR <laughs> in the half for you. I did the same thing. Yeah, today. Yeah. yeah. Did you PR your five k? <laughs> Make PR to 5K. Wait, actually, oh, that's sick. I, I haven't raced a 5k in like five years, so that's part of it. That's awesome, though. Um, okay, so when you're like on this pace, you have your pacer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it feeling like you feel like it should feel at that effort? Like you were like, this is sustainable, this feels great. It felt really good. Like I felt like that was exactly where I needed to be. I went out in like 70 ish minutes at the world championships, and that felt really hard like I was in over my head that day but 69 30 in the level that I'm at now and with all the training that felt exactly right and it was probably like mile like right before the fluid station mile 15 that Emily Sisson turned to Matt Yano the pacer and was like hey I want to pick it up a little bit I don't think I could have picked it up much or if at all so that was the point where I was like okay she needs to go I'm probably going to stay where I'm at and hopefully I can pick it up a little bit more at the end but 219 today seemed like it was going to be something that was very doable very manageable if not you know 220 which would have been a huge PR and I would have been very very happy with do you know how you say you're fast without saying you're fast (laughs) it's when you start talking about like 69 minutes (laughs) For, it's like when people talk about their babies, they're like, he's a 12 month old. No, he's a, he's a year. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, it's like, I love it when you, anything under, I guess it's under 70 minutes. You're like, yeah. Or I guess people even do that, don't they? Yeah. 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 No, that's you wouldn't know about that though. Cause you're just 69. <laughs> I have a logistical question about the pacing. Mm-hmm. Okay. How does that work? Like, do you, so you're saying, um, Emily said to Matt, I want to pick it up. And so he, he picks it up and you're just out of luck. So yeah, we kind of talk about it beforehand. So at the tech meeting last night, we all like met up me, her and Matt and we're like, okay, so obviously like he's, we're not paying him like the race is paying him. So he's going out at 6930. After that, what is he going to do? So we decided that a mile 20, it's every woman for themselves. Okay. But she pulled, you know, something out of left field and was like, I, I want to go fast now. So I was like, oh, OK, I guess we're changing the game plan, which is totally mm-hmm. fine because she must have been feeling good at that point. This is at the halfway? At like, yeah, like mile 14, 15. Okay. And if you're trying to go for the American record, you got to take your shot. Yeah. And that's she she was feeling it. And so I was like, yes, of course, you go do your thing. Matt, help you. Um, and I'll just be here in no man's so at that, at that point, <laughs> are you running alone? Yes basically um and then once 16 hit um i was hoping to reel them in but when the foot hit it it was over yeah so last year you ran or or was that two years ago when was it two years ago two years ago in chicago when it was super hot yeah soupy and you crushed yeah and i was just going to mention that the weather wasn't perfect Mm -hmm. today we had one of those days where this is what runners dream of this is the perfect conditions perfect conditions for running (laughs) If you know what I'm talking yeah, about, you means. slip on the ice. Um, <laughs> anyway, in perfect conditions. Oh. And yes, <laughs> we got, Portland. Yeah, Portland. <laughs> um, perfect conditions. Do you think that sometimes having a little bit of distraction or with weather making you feel like you have an advantage because you run well in warmer temps? I think uh, position wise, like place wise in races, people don't adjust 
before the conditions. So that's where I really can rise up to the occasion and be smart. Um, people just don't run smart. They just like stick to their specific time goal and just go after that. And then they pay the price. So um, <laughs> <laughs> she's nodding. She's like, I know like, that's wow. that is, that is me. Hello. <laughs> But it's hard it, when conditions <laughs> are perfect yeah. Yeah. because you want to take advantage of right. that. And I, I see nothing wrong with going out, you know, um, and, and trying to, to do something special for yourself. And, um, I think it's hard when you get upset about it, which like, again, um, like we all want more, but when you go after it, um, like you did today throughout that half and like faster than you ever have before, I think that's a huge step in the right direction. Um, because the next time you do that, your body's going to know what's up and is going to get used to it and has been there before. I think it's just when it's the unknown, your body is just like, what are See, you doing? I love it when you talk like this, because <laughs> this is it. We think of it as separate, like your body and your mind. It's like two different things living inside of you at the same time. No. So today when you were running and your body's not giving you what you want, you're having a little issue with the planner, what's your mind doing? Cursing at my body. <laughs> 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 yeah, a lot of profanities there. But um, just knowing that like my body shows up for me in so many ways. And like this is my 10th marathon now. And I've been very consistent. And I know that this stuff happens. Like sometimes your body just doesn't show up for you. And that's okay. Meg, you, you were out there today. Okay, so I you it was a pothole that you fell into a bit. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a pothole or like a manhole. There's Did you notice that the blue line was literally along all of the potholes? Yeah. I was like, how how is this blue line you, here? You don't have to step on the blue line. I know, but like it's a tangent. It's the though. tangent. And literally you it was a it was along all it? of the potholes. Okay. You just ran Boston, you ran it very well. Mm -hmm. That has some blue lines. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it doesn't. I don't even know. <laughs> See, that was the thing that started I didn't even notice I'm like, I'll follow the, the three stripes really? down the, all the way to Boston. And I found out that it didn't go all the way. <laughs> so where did you go? That's what I, I stopped. <laughs> stopped <laughs> running. I was just Lost like, uh, it. Does anybody know where to go? And everybody's running by me. And I was like, okay, I'll just follow those guys. Um, <laughs> okay. So mentally, like, your foot's really hurting. Was there any point where you wanted to DNF or thought about DNFing? Every step. Ooh. Okay, so what, what kept you going? Um, one thing is the appearance fee that I get. If you DNF, you only get half of that. Oh, so no. that's something that's for there. real. So much insider information here. <laughs> like I didn't know that they paid for pacers. Uh -huh. And if you DNF, Huh. I yeah. guess if you're hurting, it still makes sense to show up and then drop. Right. That's what a lot of people do. Um, yeah. So you can still get half of that appearance fee. But I got goats to feed now. So <laughs> Two goats. <laughs> Two goats. Double goats. That's, Are that's goats expensive to feed? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So where'd the goats come from? Craigslist. Where else do you get goats? Yeah. That's where Actually? Yeah. And you just were like, I want goats? Um, yeah, so Steven, my um, partner, and I were talking about, we just bought a house. He's, he's sitting over there. He's yeah. shaking his head. Like, Is he the one on the har car, car horn right now? He's like, finish up this interview and get out there. <laughs> I need you. He wants to cut this. He's like, we got to go to Chick-fil-A. They're only open on Sundays. <laughs> He, he quieted them down. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he was joking about, we just bought a house and with some acreage and stuff. And he was talking about like building a fence that is very tasteful for potential goats or alpacas or whatever you may want. Chickens. Sure. Um, Wait, okay. you don't want chickens? Mm, should I do it? Oh, Jesus. Chickens. Oh, are we, you going to tell a story about chickens? No, I'm going to tell us. Where Do you want me to are you like tell Rocky a chicken story chasing first? Chickens? We, we cannot have chickens. One, I do not like birds. I hate chickens also. Well, you know they're not real. Birds aren't real. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But there's another reason why we can't have chickens. Um, so we were getting a lot of work done on our house. Um, long story short, I was staying at Airbnb with my dog. This lady had chickens. and <gasps> He killed the chickens. Shh. <laughs> My dog is nine years old. Um, I left her to tend to the goats. I was able to have my goats at the Sarah Baby. Sure. Amazing. They were out in the yard. I went to the grocery store, came back an hour later, and there's just a massacre in the yard. Just no. chickens, I mean, chickens everywhere. Everywhere. 
I didn't know what to do. I was in shock. I have never seen this before. I didn't know how to navigate it. I think you just buy two chickens and put them back yeah, in Yeah, I would have bought more chickens. <laughs> <laughs> just chickens, she'll never you, know. You can't tell the difference between Wait, what chickens. Wait, what did you say to the Airbnb person? I was like, um, there was an instant. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a dozen eggs. I'm out. <laughs> she knew right away what I was getting at. I was like, my dog. And she's like, oh, yep. Okay. She was really nice about it, though. But unless they're like some special chickens, because there how are, many chickens are we were talking per, about? They were pretty rare chickens. They were very expensive chickens that I. There are uh, there's a catalog that you can buy yeah. special chickens from. They're very special. I, I These looked ones into were it. Special. They won't send it to you if you don't. have Did you have to pay for the though. chickens? I I didn't have to, but I offered because that's obviously sure. that's like a classy awful. move. That's yeah. a classy move. Thank you. I'm a classy gal. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Three olives yes. for Emma, by the way, if you're wondering, and a modella. Modell, modella. Modella. That's modello. a female modella. What are you talking about? It's the female version. <laughs> you got to get it right if you're going to yeah. talk about it. That's true. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, can't have chickens. Clearly can't have chickens. All right. I thought maybe it was like Rocky chasing the chickens to get faster, but mm -hmm. it turns out just to have a nope, nope, good old fashioned dog. massacre. <laughs> <laughs> so are you getting alpacas? Uh, that is That is what I want. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking over there, it's not. It's We're checking hard no. with the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I the got the goats hand. without him so knowing, yes. so right. I'll probably just come home with some alpacas one day and just. Call I it good. think I think with the planner issue today, a pity alpaca <laughs> would be a nice thing to get. <laughs> yes. There we go. When you get back, maybe there'll be a alpaca wandering around <laughs> with a Chicago medal around his neck. <laughs> Hey, that's a good question. Do mm -hmm. you care about the medal? I uh, that I do have a medal. Um, they force it on you, which I feel so they bad because I would, they you. force it. Like and they they chase you. And they like, do. Like, they okay. actually do. I'm not okay. kidding. And I felt so bad at Boston because I was like, no, I don't need a medal. It's it's totally yeah. okay. Didn't they and run then out? Turns out they ran out. Do you know why they run out at Boston? Why people jump on the course and band it and oh. take medals, stolen and valor. It. Yeah. Errs. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be real clear about that. <laughs> my my partner works for Bandit, yeah. the running company. So. Too bad they don't sell alpacas. So um. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're not into the metals. I used to be into metals and now I'm into money. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's the best answer yes. ever. The agents and stuff just start cheering in the background, by the way. Yeah. Um, well, that is great, but I'm sure there's one kind of metal you'd like. I mean, yes. Yes. And <laughs> trials are right around the corner. Mm -hmm. We talked about it a little bit. Are you going to be doing anything before trials or is that the focus now? Like, let's get down to business. I mean, I don't do anything but marathons anymore. You know that. Right. Um, and there will not be a marathon in between now and then, especially because of the foot. So, but no, that, that was always the plan in Chicago. And then that's, that's, I mean, a big reason why Chicago happened too, is because the timing of it yeah. and everything. Right. Not that, um, I mean, I love Chicago. I love coming here, but you know, New York just wouldn't have made sense. No, it's hilly. Super hilly. Right? Just I'm a running month it. later. Like, are you running it this year? Yeah. <gasps> Have fun. Ran it last year. It was so hot. And I I, I did adjust my goals and still, <laughs> still, still didn't got have a good time. Murdered. Um, yeah. So uh, let's talk about trials a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you're just off the heels. I understand that today didn't go exactly the way you wanted it to go. But isn't that but a great But can we also talk story? about how you ran a 225 and hobbled in the last I don't know 10 how miles? I did that. That's. A ridiculous hobble. I thought I was running like 245, which I know is still fast, but like. <laughs> that's what I ran. That's what you ran right. today. That's awesome, though. It's still that is fast. So, it, yes, it is. <laughs> but like going from like, you know, 219 pace to then 100%. That would be. Yeah. Have you tried running fun. a 345? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Is that your fear? <laughs> that's, that's what I do. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's not my PR. Hey, but. running is running, man. Yeah, you wouldn't yes. be impressed with my PR either. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm impressed with everybody that runs, especially when it's not your job. Like, I'm not impressed with, with professional runners. I really am not. I wouldn't be either. No. Except for you, <laughs> Kira D'Amato. Yes. I mean, Emily Sisson, I'll, I'll throw her on there sure. as well. why not? Yeah, there's a few of you guys that are pretty cool. I definitely, am, like, admire them, but I admire the you Curry. guys more. Like, people that work nine to fives. I don't know what you guys work. I don't, I guess that's... It's not that. Yeah. Job, <laughs> yeah. We're not a good example of what you're talking about. <laughs> But it's awesome when people have like such big goals and like that's not their like main thing, you know, like that's sick. Yeah. Are you ready to talk about trials now? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, but so you hobby jogging in this 225, like you have to feel pretty good about that, that yeah. that's a bad day. Yes, definitely. Like when I crossed the finish line, I was like so happy to just cross the finish line, but I was like 225. You shit. were so happy you took a nap at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw you <laughs> down the there. Yeah, I saw yeah. That. I've never done that and like never uh-huh. would dream to do that, but it hurts so bad. Oh, I thought maybe it was for the gram, like someone was <laughs> taking pictures. <laughs> like, I was just rolling around. Yeah, just rolling around. Like a little beetle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I am very happy with the 225, all things considered, but definitely really stoked about going out in 6930 and that feeling yeah. right, like yeah. that feeling like good. And so that just gives me a lot of confidence going into the trials, knowing that I am in that kind of shape. Um, I'm capable of it as long as, you know, things hold up in the way that they Yeah, I wouldn't bet against should. you for the trials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, pr- I'm kind of really excited about the trials. We're going to be there. Nice. So we kind of talked about how conditions, if it's a hilly course or it's hot weather, you feel Orlando. like you have a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> it's a 1220 start time. Yeah. So it's going to be warm, likely. Yes. Does that give you confidence or are you like, this is not great? I don't think it changes my outlook either way. Like, yes, I've ran well in hot conditions, but so can other people, you know. Um, I think just preparing in the proper way, which we are prepared to do. We are prepared to prepare. And we're going to get our gym hot as hell. Um, it's sweaty. It's I was going to ask you, are we doing this? It's the gym. And yeah. Do you guys um, have like a control chamber thing? Are you getting one? No. What is that? There's like weather chambers. Oh, you okay. Put a treadmill in I'm going to give you Joe's number. I'm, you would love that. Definitely. I will call Joe. <laughs> yes. Yes. And be like, yo, what's up? Weather chamber. Love it. Because you can also do the opposite. You can make it really cold. Okay. You can make it really hot. Any temperature oh you want. Anything yep. you want to keep cold. <laughs> okay. Anything you want hot, you put it in that chamber. He's all about the gadgets right. and the science. Yes. He's the one to talk to. Um, Matt just said we should high five. Yay! Yeah. That's not. That's not. <laughs> no, I'm doing, we're doing it. That's not what that was. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, have you been to Orlando before? I have not. I have only been to Tallahassee and Jacksonville. What is, is uh, it similar? It's pretty close. No, okay. no, it's yeah. not I mean, close at all. You, you weather wise, Disney World I was, and, I was and talking strictly weather wise. No, I, that's, I'm, yeah, I was leading into like. Do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. absolutely. When, yeah. What's the first thing you do when you win the Super Bowl? Go, we're going to Disney World. Okay, is that so, so a thing that people say? It I is. think it is. <gasps> Love it. Yeah. And the confetti is shaped like little Mickey Mouse heads. Aww. Yeah. That's so really cute. When you. I want that. When. Yes. I, like I didn't want to say it in case you're jinxy about it. Nah. Okay. <laughs> no, put when it we, out there. When we double goat the Olympic trials. <laughs> okay. Disney World? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're already there. That's rad. <laughs> okay. So outside of hot treadmill runs, okay. what else are we doing to prepare? I have a sauna at my house. Oh. Um, so Steven and I bought a house together. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but we did. Wow. You guys went to Instagram public only a couple of months ago <laughs> and now buying houses and saunas together. Is it like, <laughs> are we pouring water over rocks? What's going on? <laughs> this house is sick though. It was built in 1970 and just had a sauna in it. Oh, that's cool. I mean, that's cool. what they do. And then there's like red velvet was, carpet everywhere. Sweden it's... was very big in American culture <laughs> in the 70s. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The and, meatballs. And this house is located saunas. where? Um, in Boulder. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Up the mountain a bit. Okay. Ooh. It's real nice. It says 7,000 feet. So I got that uh, that boost. Whoa. Yes. I don't know what boost it is, we but people tell me that. thing with you, the Margs. Margs. <laughs> Mags. Mags. No, That's I like it. Margs wow. better. I like yeah. Margs. It's Margs now. Yeah. I would rather <laughs> forever, dr- I, forever yeah. call it Margs. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather run Margs <laughs> than run Mags again. Right. I've only ran it twice. So I commend you for going from sea level to It parks almost killed me, I swear. Yeah, no. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but it's I went normal. up there and almost died. That's how you're <laughs> supposed to feel. Actually, you almost died. Yeah. Okay, so when you came here, uh-huh. do you feel the like, difference? Are you like, this feels better here? Yeah, there's so much oxygen. Yeah, okay. you're like choking on it. It's great. I love it. Yeah, so it does make a big difference. I even like had to adjust my training once um, I moved into our house at 7,000 feet because I wasn't recovering like enough. Mm. So I had to lower my mileage a bit, had to tweak some things, and then it was okay. But it does make a big difference, yeah. Yeah, I would imagine it does because yeah. 
I almost died when I was there. I don't know <laughs> if I mentioned that. <laughs> if you're not dying at altitude, I, you're doing something wrong. Meg wasn't dying. Other people weren't dying. I don't That's think impressive. I'm affected what? by it. Like rare unicorn. Yeah. Yeah, it's she's beautiful. A but I also don't Love think I probably you. would get the benefits of it either. So I don't, it's not a win. That's, at all. that's actually, yeah. might be accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Meg, do you have any questions? Because we've got to probably wrap this up. Yeah. No, I have a couple more. Max, all right. Max said we had 10 minutes. He, we now now it's down to five. Well, okay. Five minutes. We got to be fine. respectful. We'll high five again right. and it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two more high fives. All is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, want a Modelo, Meg? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, so your trading partner this cycle has been a lot with Dom. Yes, Dominic Scott. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is not a guy. No. Dom is Dom. No, Dom. Dominic. Oh, you know? Dominic. It's Dominic. Yes, yeah. Dominic. Dominique. South African runner. Yes. How much fun has this training cycle been with her? So nice. Like having company, it just makes everything go by so much faster. Are and you guys best friends now? So it's it's actually awesome that we're not best friends huh? um, because it just makes work so much easier. Like we're just colleagues, but like really great colleagues. Plus, like we work if you so beat her, together. then you yeah. don't feel as bad. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> go with. Let's go with that. All right. <laughs> what, what are your friends like? I don't, yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> that just pretty much explains that last comment. <laughs> but. Honestly, like she comes from a track background. So mm -hmm. like everything she does is so fast and she's so good at it. Um, so she really pulled me along during that fast stuff. And I was able to like run the paces. Like I was running like five flat pace for a lot of the workouts and it felt comfortable after like however many weeks. Um, so I really calloused myself into feeling good doing that stuff. And then I helped her feel good in the longer stuff. She's not used to that right. stuff. This is only her second marathon cycle. So we really complement each other. Like her strengths um, have become some of my strengths and vice versa. I love the content where you guys are de like running together. Mm -hmm. I like the buddy content on Instagram with the whole boss crew. So keep that up. Thank you. Yeah, we, we have a good thing going. I like it. It's nice. Yeah. We've talked about before, um, like Thomas has paced me for a lot of my workouts. This on a bicycle. Yeah. This, no, uh, not running. <laughs> this, this cycle. <laughs> and, um, yeah, let's clarify that one. Was and okay. I, uh, let's I paced him for a couple of his workouts and we've talked about how it's so nice to have someone next to you who doesn't seem like they're working that hard because mm -hmm. then it makes you feel like you're not working as hard. So I imagine in the scenarios where you're talking about like where Dom is stronger and like the track stuff, the shorter, faster stuff and you're running next to her, it feels a little bit better. Whereas you're taking the lead on like the longer stuff and you feel better. Like she can take that energy. Do you feel like that is played a big part in your training? I think so. But also knowing that somebody out there is suffering a lot also <laughs> really helps me. The opposite. Does it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. That's mean. So if like Misery Dom's like company. dying, yeah. you're like, this is great. Oh, <laughs> you're you're both but I'm also dying. Oh, like okay. that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Misery loves company. It's not like I don't want her to feel bad. You don't want her feel feeling good. good and you're like dying. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Like, like, like I've had that with training partners in the past where they smell blood and they just like beat oh. you. Oh crap. And it's like, that no, would be me. that's not, if I could yeah. Do that. Yeah. Cause that's why I don't have any friends. Full circle there. But that's the great thing about Dom and I, like we never compete. So okay. that's it. Do you like her good. accent? Love it. I know, right? South <laughs> yeah. African's got a nice accent. Yes. I feel like she hates it sometimes, which I understand. Like I come from Minnesota and like I got rid of my Minnesota accent because people just like comment Can you still about pull it. it up? Wait, what do you mean you got oh. rid of it? I mean, if I have a couple more of these, yes, it okay. will come out. You can just stop <laughs> what is talking your... like you used to talk. Yeah. What? Like Madonna yeah. did when she moved to London. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Right. Okay. Did, I'm going to have a British accent here is, soon. Is, okay. is there any... Uh, <laughs> is it, it, when, when Dom did... Uh, when Is there any words that you love? Like, I like wheelie bin. Like, that's oh, a British thing. I don't think like she that. says anything that's, like, South African-esque, but, like, just the way she talks and the mm -hmm. inflections that she has. Mm -hmm. It just keeps things interesting. It does. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Meg. Follow that up. <laughs> okay, so how long have you been working with Joe now? Two and a half years. And do you still love it? 
Yeah. He no. seems very entertaining from like the social media online perspective that I see. Is mm-hmm. he actually that fun? He is so much fun, okay. but also very serious. He's oh. got like a great mix of things. Like he loves talking about training and gets so into the data. And I'm just like, I just like my eyes glaze over a lot. Um, but when he is there, it's so nice. Like he has to travel a lot with the track girls, but like when he shows up for us, it's like he's showing up like fully. Like we have all of him there and he's so fun and so goofy and it just makes it so light and fun and that's like what we've really talked about recently is like yeah there's the physical part and the mental part but there's also the spiritual part and like the spiritual part is all about like enjoying it and wanting to show up every day and just really just look forward to the workouts and and working hard so that's what I really like about um Joe is just like he always keeps it light and and wanting to like come back for more and have it be sustainable. And I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. So Meg was going for an OTQ today and it didn't happen. (laughs) Sure didn't. (laughs) But there was a lot of people that were invested in it. Like, cause we talk about it. We talk about it on our programs, whatever. And I'm always surprised how well she can handle like that much attention on when you set a goal out there. Yeah. You've got even bigger, like, now, I mean, at this point, you have everybody on social media. You have a coach. You have an agent. You have, you know, a new house <laughs> with a new guy. <laughs> um, is is all that pressure, like, high five, Mac. <laughs> is all that, is, it, it, does any of that ever get to you with training? Or are you able to, like, zen focus down and get, like, like, or do you feel it during while you're running? Like when you're plantar fasciitis, or I guess it was plantar fasciitis, when that kicked up today, does anything when you have that much time to run, like does that stuff go through your mind? Like, I think um, today when I was hurting so bad and I felt like I was running like eight, nine, 10 minute pace, I felt a little embarrassed. Like my pride took a hit um, mm. because I know there's all these people out here that admire me and expect you know, me to perform well. Um, but at the end of the day, like I look at somebody that I really admire and it's always, you know, my teammates specifically, whenever they have a bad day, I'm just like, I am so proud of you. Like just being out there and giving it your all, like, you know, that people are giving it their all, like they're not just dogging it. And that's what is so beautiful about running is like, you're always giving a hundred percent no matter what. And so I know those people out there today that were supporting me, were supporting me for me regardless yeah Yeah. and that's what's so beautiful about I don't know just getting older and wiser and just realizing that people don't stick around because of your performances they stick around because of you because of who you are and that's something that has um, really grounded me and allowed me to enjoy running a lot more is just knowing that even if I have a poor performance people are still going to stick around so we talked about that mind body two heads yeah were you arguing with yourself during that time, like when you're going through and you would have a negative feeling, would you like, were you able to like battle it back? Yeah. I was like, Emma, look around you. Like, look at where you are. You're at a world major. You're still running really fast. And there's all these people cheering your name. Like you have to take a step back and be like, this is really cool still. Like, even though I'm not having the day that I expected, this is like still amazing. And this is why I do this sport because of all the love that is just everywhere. Yeah, and I know we got to wrap up soon, but I do want a, a follow up question to that. So uh, a few years ago, you probably weren't getting as many cheers on the course. Mm-hmm. Now, do you just feel like it's like this keeps magnifying? Like it's like it multiplying? is. It, it has multiplied, and it's really wonderful. But I definitely know like the real ones were there from the beginning, and that's really special. We're a real one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys have always been been there for me, and that's, like, the people that I always go back to, and, like, thank you for always believing me, even when I was, like, not sucked, but, like, when, when things were you not, never, not you as never great. Sucked, Emma, let's be when real. I wasn't, like, on the top. When but you there had was no times. goats. Yeah. <laughs> Before we were the still goats. There. Exactly. Pre-goats. Yeah. Pre-goats. We, we predate the goats. <laughs> But it does feel good. And um, I just, I like to affect the sport in a way that like, I don't, it doesn't matter what you say or what you, you know, do. It's like how you make people feel. And I want to leave a lasting impact. You're super entertaining. And uh, not just when we're talking to you, but like when you're running, it's like fun to watch you run. And the uh, thing is like, it's a better story if there are hiccups than if you're just 
you know, all the way through. So, like, I'm super excited to watch Trials. I don't know about you, Meg. Do you want to watch Trials? I'm pretty excited about we it. We already booked our flights <laughs> yeah. and stuff, so oh. we're already there. But, um, yeah, so we are wishing you well, and it, it will be very exciting to see you pop out of this and win. do the next thing. Yeah, We're going for yeah. the win. Yeah, exactly. That's it. There's yeah. no other yeah. option. Again, you just speak it into yeah. existence. Yeah. I believe that. Okay, wait, I have one final end question. Mm-hmm. I already know the answer. Is it for but me? But I have to ask. <laughs> what shoe did you wear today? Oh, I wore the A6 Metaspeed Edge. Are you sure? <laughs> was it the plus? <laughs> ben? <laughs> Is that right? Fact check. Plus. Edge plus. plus. I finally I finally Edge got plus. Ben on the podcast. This has been my <laughs> dream. You may have not heard it, but Ben, I can't tell you the last name, otherwise he'll shoot me. But he said some stuff. Yeah, Edge plus. Now, what's interesting to me is that that one's a little more aggressive than the Sky plus. Yes. Can you feel the difference between them or are you just like, hey, these both work well? I think they both work great. I think there's so much pop in them, so much, um, yeah, just like feedback from the ground that I think there's no wrong answer there. The Metaspeed Sky Plus and the Metaspeed Edge Plus are the way to go. But you're thinking for trials it'll be the Edge Plus on I don't feet? know, honestly. Oh, okay. I think I might try both out. Like I Test wore them again? the Metaspeed Edge Plus at Boston uh-huh. and then I've worn the Metaspeed Sky you know, every time before. So I like both of them. Have you been trying any product that maybe isn't available to the public yet to see how you like it? The 3.0, which is amazing. (laughs) Max, I hear so we can talk about it. (laughs) It's a huge step above and I cannot recommend it enough. All right. Can't wait. exciting. Meg, is there anything else you want to do before we wrap no, up? No, we got to let Emma go, but I'm so I, appreciative I, I, of you coming and chatting with us right after the, the right Chicago right. Marathon, even though I know it was not the day you wanted. Like, we're all so impressed by you and just huge fans. So. Yeah, and I like that you, you will guys. talk to us. So that <laughs> yeah, is very Yeah, you guys cool. are so fun. So, like, uh, 100% anytime you guys want to chat also, and martinis. make me martinis. Come on. Yes. Thank you. All right, well, thanks for coming <laughs> in. And I would love, is one of your ghosts named Thomas? <laughs> One will be. Okay. I would love to have a goat named after me. (laughs) So I'm just putting out there. Or you're thinking about maybe a chicken. I would be fine being a chicken on the Emma. No, there's no chickens. Do you want to be massacred? Yes, they're getting massacred. Do you want to be completely oh, chickens, torn apart? They, yeah, they get beat up. Okay. Uh, oh, an alpaca named Thomas. There you go. All right. There it is. That would be there great. There it is. Watch out, Thomas spits. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to wrap it up and entirely... Probably that last part is getting cut out. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy not hearing that, people. But trust me, it was good. Emma, do you have any dirty jokes you want to tell before dirty we go? Jokes. <laughs> Don't get me going. Cut. <laughs> We're done. All right, there we go. All right, thanks, Emma. Thank you, guys.